Hi, I'm Hans, and uh, I may seem drunk, but I'm not. Most of the time, at least. <laughs> um, I have cerebral palsy, and uh, you know, ever since I was a kid, it, it was always my dream to like do music. And my mom actually sent me for piano classes as therapy for my fingers. But with cerebral palsy, my brain would think in time, but my fingers wouldn't move in time. So for me to be a professional musician, it wasn't an option. So then I chose to do sound engineering, which is the next best thing, because I still got to be a part of the music industry, but I didn't have to perform, which is why I'm scared on stage now, because I've, I've never been introduced to the stage as a musician. <laughs> so after, uh, after completing my sound engineering, I came back and I set up my own recording studio and I ran that for five years. And I, I, as, as he said, that I've always been crazy about nature. So I went on a trip to Kana in 2007 and that's where I saw my first tiger. And that, that it was, and that, that sighting of the tiger like, raised a lot of questions in my head as to why are these tigers dying? Why are, what's, what's, what's the scene with the forests? Why are there so little forests? Why are there so little tigers? Why, why is there so little wildlife? And, and a, a year later, like, I shut my studio down and, and I set out to like, find, find these answers to these questions. So I traveled to a lot of different jungles and trying to educate myself and find answers to these problems. Along, along the way through these jungles, <laughs> I met this girl, <laughs> fell in love with her. She's as crazy as I am, trust me. And uh, we both share a passion for tigers. And uh, I, and she's crazy enough to have said yes to marry me. <laughs> and, and, and together we started this organize in this NGO called Prowl. Prowl stands for preservation of wild landscapes. And let me an upright. And so, let me start by giving you an insight into the problems that wildlife faces and what we do at Prowl. Next slide. Why is it important to conserve our forests? You know, if you look, if you look, if you think, if you think hard, we learned this in the fifth standard. But somewhere along the way, we forgot that little bit of education that we had in school. But, uh, you know, like this friend of mine, I met in Rantambur, Mr. Fateh Singh Rathod, he told me something and that stuck in my head. That where there are tigers, there's, there are forests. Where there are forests, there is rainfall. Where there is rainfall, rivers flow. And that's water, right? And water is really important for human beings as well, not only animals. So everything is linked. And that's what we learned in school also. Like, we learned in school that when the tiger kills the deer, the deer eats the grass. So indirectly, the tiger eats the grass. You know, that's all, that it's basically simple stuff that, that, that we learned in school, but we forgot along the way. So we try and create awareness about that. Uh, uh, next slide. So uh, on my journey through like many years of traveling to the jungle, I realized that you know, we have 48 tiger reserves in India. And the fact is that out of these 48 tiger reserves, 700 of our fresh water sources, rivers, lakes, start from these 48 tiger reserves in our country. If these, if, if these tiger reserves, if these forests vanish, we'll be fighting for water, clean drinking water next. And the, some of the issues that the tiger faces for basic survival, it's not even like, to live a comfortable life is basically survival at the end of the day of that species. It's like human, a human encroachment. We are, we, are, we are pushing into their forests. We are chopping down the jungles. 
to make roads, to make train tracks for our forests are rich in minerals. So we go in and mine illegally. Oh, uh, we found some people found that there is value for animal parts in the international trade. So there's poaching. Since our forests are like decreasing, our uh, territorial fights like tigers are very territorial. So, but but they are used to huge territories. A male tiger requires 100 square kilometers for one male tiger. And now they're pushed. They've been pushed and cornered. And that, that, that has increased the number of conflicts, which is unnatural. Even though it's natural, it's still unnatural. Because they're coming more and more in contact with each other, which never used to happen before. So these are just a few of the problems that are staring us in the face. Next slide. And that's not good because tiger, because if tigers interact, if tigers from different forests interact with one another, it increases the gene pool. But right now, because they're, because these forests are isolated from each other, there's a lot of inbreeding happening. And that's what's also, that's what's also screwing their chances of survival completely. Next slide. So about us, said Raul. <laughs> At Brown, uh, so we are so we are a non-profit organization. Uh, we believe in one sec. The uh, one of our main objectives is spreading awareness, like tell, telling people what the see what the situation is. Like you know, we all heard save the tiger on every day, save the tiger, save the tiger. But what really is it that, they, that we need to save them from? That nobody knows, right? So that's part of our objective is that, creating awareness with, among people on the issues that are going on. Then, but you know, like, like I said, like when you, the, the, the tiger is just, is only a, is an apex predator, it's a symbol of the forest. Like, if you, make, if you make a pyramid, the tiger's on top. But every other animal, plant, everything, is because the tiger is there. So by protecting the tiger, we are protecting the whole ecosystem. We are protecting the entire habitat. And that is more important than protecting the tiger. Because if, if you protect the tiger, and if you don't have a place to keep it, then what's the use of protecting that animal? You know, what do you want to see a tiger in a zoo? No, I'd rather see a tiger happy in the wild if I'm protecting it, if I'm saving it, right? So that's one of our objectives. And another thing is that, see, all, 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 our, all, our, all our forests have people living inside and outside it. And these people are either affected by wildlife or they, or they affect wildlife. So the thing is that by, with, the, with the help of these local communities only, you can save wildlife and our forests because they are the ones that can make the difference. We cannot make a, we cannot do anything sitting in a, in a city rather other than giving funds to an NGO. Okay, I did my bit for society. I did my bit for nature. But those local communities that live around the forests that are getting killed by animals, their crops are getting destroyed by animals. Those are the people that can make a difference, and we 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 work closely with them. And I'll tell you that ahead in, my, in the presentation. And we have a two-fold impact. We, 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 we believe in conserving the environment as well as uplifting the rural societies. Next slide. Our project. I'll tell you a bit about our projects now. Next slide. In, ha, have you heard of the Sundarbans? So the Sundarbans are like, it's like, it's like, it's like a delta, yeah, exactly. It's like completely underwater. It's like, it's like complete ma mangrove forest. So it's very hard to get around. The only way to go around in the Sundarbans is on boat. And, the, and there are a lot of waterborne diseases out there. So, and these forest guards that go on patrolling duty, are like, are like subject to these diseases. 
and for them to get access to medical help or to reach a hospital also is very hard because they have to catch a boat and go down the river for like many hours. So at Brown, at we, we conducted a first aid training program, an outdoor survival program for 200 forest guards in the Sundarbans. And we gave them hip pouches, first aid kits, like basic medi medi medicine that they can take before reaching the hospital. What do you do? So we, so we gave them that training so that they can, they can do their job better in patrolling and protecting our forests. Next slide. This was full fun. So I'm a sound engineer, right? So I went to Bandavgarh. And like an idiot, I, spent, I spelled the spelling of Bandavgarh wrong. Actually, I think it's G-A-H-R-H. So yeah, my spellings are very bad all my life. I used the laptop with spell check. I can't write. So yeah, so I went to Bandavgarh. And there's this tribe called the Bega community. And they're very poor. And they live, uh, they live just touching the, touch, touching the jungle. And their main income is agriculture. But the problem is, is that they, they can't afford to build a fence around their, around their land. So in the night, deer and wild boar come and eat up half their crop. So they suffer from malnutrition. Uh, infant mortality rate is very high in this community. And some, some of them, and they're completely dependent on the forest. They go into the jungle for all their needs. So I went there and we realized that some of these guys are musicians. So we, we, we went in and we recorded, them, we recorded their music, they're folk musicians. And we hope to like, we hope to like get their voice out there someday and make a difference to them and help and raise some money through the sales of their music to get them better crops so, or, or like do something to uplift them, you know? Like build a fence around their land, for example. Or like teach them new skill sets. Next slide. So, you know, I told, if you remember the slide where, where the jungles were like all isolated. So there's, 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 there's this thing called corridors. It's basically a green belt that connects one forest to another. And Umnet Khananda Wildlife Sanctuary is a very important corridor for movement of tigers between Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh. And so with, so with, the, with, with the support of Sanctuary Asia and the forest department, uh, we've, been monitoring the, we've been monitoring tigers and animals in Umnet Khananda for the forest department. So we raised we raise some money through donations again, and we set up these camera traps in the jungle. Next slide. You know, last year in August, in August uh, I don't know if you, it came in the papers, but I don't know if any of you have read about it. Last year in August, a tiger was killed in Maharashtra by the state forest department. So there was a man eater, he had killed seven people, and the department wasn't sure as to which tiger it was. So we, so we stepped in and we helped them identify the tiger and we helped them track the tiger also. And unfortunately, like it, it, was, it, was, it was nobody's fault actually, but the tiger had to be taken down because it wasn't technically possible to tranquilize him. And that's part, that's, that's part of the reality of conservation. I mean, it's something that a conservationist should never, should never go through, but well, it's part of the job. Next slide. So after that, we started doing intensive camera trapping in corridors around forests in Maharashtra. And these are a few of the images we got from those. So there's a, there's a, and this is, and this is not in, not in protected forest. This is all reserved forest, it's unprotected forest. And see this, there's a bear with a cub, there's a leopard, there's a tiger with two cubs. And this is all outside the tiger reserve. So the, the thing is that there is so much wildlife even outside the protected areas. Next. So after that, after, after that whole experience, uh, we started training forest guards also 
in how to set up camera traps, how to monitor, how to, how to keep a track of what tigers are there, where they're moving, how they're moving, stuff like that. Like identifying tigers through stripes. Because the thing is that ti tigers' stripes are like human fingerprints. No two tigers have the same stripes. So you can, it's really easy to identify a tiger as compared to a leopard, which has many spots. If you try identifying leopards, I guess for the whole year you'll be like, seeing spots. <laughs> Next slide. Uh, yeah, so there's this forest called Simlipal in Odisha. And now there we don't, there we had, there's an NGO called CCI. That stands for Conservation Consortium of India. And with Conservation and with CCI, we stepped in and we got 200 forest guards, self purification water bottles. Because again, they're also subject to water diseases. And these, and these water bottles were given to us at cost price by Eureka Forbes, which was really sweet of them. Uh, next slide. Again, in Simlipal, right? There's this. There, there, there are these, there's this, there is this community that believes it, that lives on agriculture. But again, they only grow rice because the land is not fertile enough. So we, we along with CCI again, went in and like tried to like teach them organic farming and teach them how to make fertilizer out of waste. So that takes care of the waste management and it gives and it gives them something that they can sell in the cities. Like fertilizer, people buy. So that will give them alternate source of income as well. Uh, we, we, we did this in 17 villages in Simlipal. And it has, and it has like made a huge difference. Like they are, they, they've been very, they've been very receptive of this idea. And this, and they are seeing changes being made in their own land. Also, the idea, you must be thinking that what does this have to do with like tiger conservation, right? Like teaching organic farming or like how does it save the tiger? But the thing is that if, if we can improve their life, if we can uplift them from society, then when we need, then when we talk to them about conservation, because they trust us that we are there for them, they start listening to us also as to what we are saying, rather than shutting us out completely and saying, Tumhe kya hai? Okay. The next, the next project for Raul is to continue with this, with this, with this organic farming and making compost in Satkosia Tiger Reserve, which is another important corridor. And the, the, there's another problem also. We plan to create a, uh, we plan to create a project like a model. Like a model that can be easily replicated in other parks as well. And uh, the last thing, the next, the immediate next project is working with women on sanitation. So there are these women in Odisha and Simlipal only, and they are so poor that they go to the market to buy sanitary pads. And they can't afford it because it's expensive, right? So what they do is they reuse the same sanitary pad. They'll wash it and they'll reuse it. And that's like unhealthy and hygienic. So we, so we plan on like, we plan on like teaching them to make sanitary pads at a low cost and give it to them. Like teach them how to make it and teach them to sell it also to other community locals in that area. And. Uh, so yeah, I would like to end Next slide. Yeah, so I would like to end by saying that from a mere five second tiger sighting in 2007 to being on foot five feet away from a man-eating tiger, it's been one hell of a journey. And yes, the Royal Bengal Tiger really changed my life. Thanks. So, you know, just before he got on stage, he told me something very interesting. He said, Firoz, I'm feeling extremely nervous. I don't even feel nervous when I see a tiger, but getting on stage of IS is making me very nervous. 
So I think he was fantastic. Let's hear a big round of applause for him. Now let's